<laughs> What's up, everyone? It's your boy Danny Vega, aka Danny V, and I'm back with my crew for the Geekly discussion. And right now we have uh, Marcus and Ian with us tonight, and we're gonna be talking about Spider-Man. And I'm super excited with all the news, all the uh, teasers and uh, leaks, and you know, people seeing this actor in Georgia and that actor on set. I'm just blown away. And Ian has been telling me all sorts of stuff that I don't even know. So I can't wait to discuss this with my boys. And uh, yeah, guys, go ahead and say your piece. What's going on, people? Marcus McGill here. Keep your uh, eyes out for Terrifier 2 later this year and also this movie stream starring some uh, big horror icons. So thank you for having me, Ben. Cool. Um, Ian Frierson. Uh, I am a Marvel fan, Spider-Man fanatic, and just happy to be here talking about Spider-Man and the future of it. Yeah, I'm super excited, everyone. I'm telling you, this is... I don't know, man. If they do it right, this is going to be one of the, I believe, best Spideys out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. This is the, just the idea of the rumors that were going out, you know, with this person being in this movie, that person being in this movie. Everybody believed, okay, wait, it's a rumor. It's this. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Then we find out it is going to happen. So now it's like, is this movie going to top end game, which I think it is, you know, or is it going to be a dud or, or is it, you know, there's a lot of things coming around. And not only that, you know, with Spider-Man, Spider-Man now is with going to be coming back to Sony, Sony creating that new SPU MC, which I like to call it the SPU is the Sony picture universe of spider-man characters so he's having his own universe of all these other characters that are streamlined from spider-man so it's it's like i said it's beyond ridiculous this is really interesting though because the the fact that he has his own universe i mean come on man like what seriously what is what do we do next like is he still in the MCU? Is he not? Because once you create and establish his universe, they're trying to connect. They said they're going to try to connect Venom with it. I saw that, which mm -hmm. was nuts to me. Right. And on top of that, you got this whole, um, what was it? Uh, Andrew Garfield and both him and Toby Maguire are saying they're not in it. But uh, Alfred Molina and also Jamie Foxx said they were going to be in it. Mm -hmm. And then... To see that, oh, their stunt doubles were together, and then the Instagram right. post getting taken down the whole night. Like, I'm just, I'm still like wondering what is the actual idea they're going for. You, you know what I'm saying? They're multiverse, right. you know? That's it. The multiverse. It's the multiverse, That's... man. And then don't forget the rumor with, uh, how do you pronounce his name? Reese Rice Ifarms, who played yeah. the lizard in uh, The Amazing mm -hmm. Spider Man. Yeah, the is that the lizard might be in it. You know, so, so this is is connecting everything. This is going to be the first time, not just a superhero, but a movie alone is bringing old characters and putting them with new characters, and they're sharing the same screen, which is mind blown. You know, and you're gonna see. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. You're probably gonna see a lot of other characters, aka. <clears throat> batman that might do that you know in the mix so i think they're trying to top end game and they're going to do that multiverse but what they're going to say is let's start off with the spider verse first then the multiverse i think it's pretty ambitious because of the fact that i mean as a kid growing up reading spider-man comics and, and mm -hmm. watching animated series oh, yeah. next to batman what other character in comics have that gallery of villains you know absolutely I mean? absolutely and spider-man is spider-man a bad man that has the best gallery of villains you know superman is close but spider-man and batman hands absolutely. down has the best villains. Absolutely. so setting so up my... a universe and bringing in those villains that the amazing spider-man started to do 
Yeah. Uh, with part two, where you saw the guy, the man in black, walking by and saw the uh, uh, Sinister Six, you mm-hmm. know, uniforms and everything. I'm actually looking forward to it, you know, to see what they're going to do. So my thing is, is that I'm hoping they do it right because apparently, allegedly, you know, however you want to say it, is supposed to be uh, tied into with the multiverse of madness. Mm-hmm. That this is how it's supposed to, you know, all these I guess, all. characters come back yeah. and William, mm-hmm. Willem Dafoe coming back. Oh, my God. Is Green Goblin? That and, uh, would be insane. And then on top of that, uh, they said a major character dies, which right. we don't know if it's one of the Spider-Mans. You know what I mean? We don't know. Right. And then on top of that, there's rumor that Willem Dafoe's uh, Green Goblin becomes leader of the Sinister Six. Oh, yes. That would be sick. And, and, so, gonna... and another thing that's crazy is Norman Osborn, and for like all the, like the comic book heads that are out there, Norman Osborn is not only just in Spider-Man, he's also in the Dark Avengers. So I think they're still kind of leading that. And oh, Kevin yeah. Feige, who is a, a big comic book reader, is saying, if you want the answers, you got to look in that comic book. So I think that's what he's doing is he's utilizing Norman Osborn. And I'm going to be honest with you. Don't be surprised. You might see William Defoe, but you might see Franco in there. You might see Dahan in there. So that would be beyond nuts if you saw all three of them fighting the three Spider-Men at the end after the Sinister Six are, are Will. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, you know. What would be cool is if Willem Dafoe does become the Sinister Six uh, leader. Right. Um, allegedly, again, I watched a bunch of YouTubers and stuff like that. So allegedly, mm-hmm. when Tom Holland faces off with Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, he figured, oh, there's a um, Norman Osborn in my universe. So when he right. goes to see him, apparently this Norman Osborn is good which could lead that Norman Osborn into the Iron Patriot. Because remember, yep. that Norman Osborn in that storyline pretended to be good and all this jazz, yep. and then he led right. the Dark Avengers as Iron Patriot. So Absolutely. that could, that could be a hell of a twist in the movie. Like, oh, it's a good Norman mm-hmm. Osborn. Psych, here's the Iron Patriot, you know? Um, right. Yeah, I just, I don't know, man. Like I said, if they do it well enough, it's incredible. Especially if you see Wanda in there, you know what I mean? And I I still hope they make her a villain just because for old time's sake, like if you're dedicating it to the comics, you know? Right, right, For old time's sake, you know, before she turns back good. You know, they kind of hinted to that in um, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier as much as I dislike that show. Jesus. You still gotta talk about that. I still hate, I still hate it, dude. (laughs) But here's the deal, like, I, I love the fact of subtlety in the beginning when right. Rudy was talking to Sam, and he's like, people that we once called allies are now enemies. Yeah, enemies, right, And, and you're right. like, who, who are we talking about right now? You know what I mean? Like, who exactly. are we talking about? Exactly, exactly. Um, so that will be, that'll be interesting to see all that come together. But now my next question for both of you boys is mm-hmm. that are they doing, because, again, allegedly it's supposed to be tied into – but remember, we've had multiple Spider Verses per se, right. even in the comic book and the cartoons and a bunch of other stuff. So, do you think this would be a byproduct? Even though they said it's supposed to tie in, let's let's uh, let's play devil's advocate. Let's say it's not right. Okay. Do you think this is a Madam Web thing happening, Ooh. where all the Spider Mans are coming together? Ooh. I mean, that I it might be too soon for that. Yeah, might be. They could set it they, up, but yeah, you know, that might be too soon. Because that's now that when you're talking about ambition, that's an ambitious project right there. Yeah, like the very. <laughs> I already got my fan cast for that one, Charlie Steron. Yes, yeah. hands yeah. down, hands down. Unless you go older, unless you go older, I was gonna say go, go older, with uh, like, like uh, the comic and cartoon. Uh, what's the what's the British actress name? Um, who plays, the one that played uh, M? No. Oh, she would be good, but I don't think she'd she be good. good. Dame Judi oh. Dench. No, but I was gonna say uh, Helen Mirren. Okay. Ooh. Helen Mirren would be awesome. 
That would be dope. Yeah. Cause she, she's that type of, you know, even though she's up there in age, she's still mm-hmm. beautiful, but she's a right. fun actress. You know what I mean? Hell, she's in the Fast and Furious world now. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, yeah, she would be awesome. Yeah, yeah but it's awesome. still, it's still, like I said, Madam Web, even if it did connect, I, I'm kind of thinking about it now. The whole Madam Web thing, and, you know, let's say, for instance, it is Wanda, the reason why for the Multiverse of Madness, or, you know, or Doctor Strange taking her as a protege, whatever, dude. All I'm saying is, if the multiverse is happening, Right. To have Madam Web in there would make sense because remember, we all thought that the spider was, um, you know, radioactive, and that's the mm-hmm. reason why they got their powers. But come to find out, it was a spirit totem. Right. You know, so like, I don't know. Do you think that may be it, or do you think that's pushing it right now? Like I said, because we had multiple ones before in the yeah. comic. Like I'm saying, so. Like if I was. If if they were to bring her in the fold, definitely like save it as like a post credit scene. Post credit, I, I agree. I you definitely know, and then set yeah. it up over over time multiple movies like the Avengers. You know what okay. I mean? Exactly. So I can see that. That's that's just that's too big of a a story to like, you know. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And she's definitely. such a big character, man. Yeah, yes. of course she's she is. such and a big character. Dude, you can't just shoehorn her in and, and like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you no, know I can see what, what your boys so, are saying. Start off yeah. small. Start off with three Spider-Man. Yeah. Before yeah. going into the whole vast. Yeah. Yeah. Or even maybe not even that, but just show the other characters mm-hmm. that are streamlined from Spider-Man, like Silk mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. Like show uh, a, another group of spider men and spider women then lead it up to that which would yeah. be really cool start That's tying cool. them yeah. together ben yeah. riley kane yeah uh, yeah yeah so yeah. let's see that you just you just brought something in my head now you know like, oh, the rumor shit. about uh um when you brought up a major character dying another yeah. rumor was kirsten dunce also Yes, that is cast. a big rumor. Yes. So having her and Zendaya, since Zendaya is MJ, you right. know, uh, which one of them, if she is officially in the movie, which one of them is going to die? Now, I would yeah, love I if Emma Stone came back as Gwen. <laughs> and here's the <laughs> you know what I mean? But as, but as, but as Spider Woman. Spider, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And see, the thing about it, every time they ask, everybody about the movie they asked garfield about the movie when they asked garfield he did it he was trying to not say exactly what it was but he never said no i'm not in the movie mm-hmm. and he he was asked again by another person and it was almost copy and paste with exactly what he said so it's kind of like you know what's going on here who's dying stuff like that they're trying to hide it you know, McGuire, I mean, he was looking rough before the whole film in. Now he's clean shaven, lost a little bit of weight. So something's coming down the line, like the pipelines and stuff like that. And IMBD, I'm glad you said Kirsten Dunst because they caught something on IMBD where it was like her makeup artist that was on and listed or something, hairstylist or something. And it said, Mrs. Dunst, makeup artist or oh, hairstyle wow. i was like okay oh, something's stuff. going on <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah. something's <laughs> going on they're not talking about it. well yeah. here's the deal too man like um uh, me and you discussed this ian we discussed mm-hmm. that when they saw tom hollins and andrew garfield stunt double together and yes. they posted on instagram and they're like take that shit down and Damn. then they, they weren't they weren't even wearing spider-man stuff they were just saying hey we're hanging out and you know doing stunts and mm-hmm. all of a sudden, take it down? Come on, man. Yeah, if that's that not, right. hey, we're in the film together. <laughs> yeah, yeah know exactly. Is, you know? Exactly. But, yeah. um, so boys, let me ask you this. Like, I know I'm going to be called a hater, but you know okay. me. I'm very, I'm very comic book integrity. I'm very, if you're going to, if you're going to give us a character, you know, at least be very similar to the per- comic. That's why, 
and here we're going to go with uh, the Tom Holland thing. This is why I'm going to be called a hater. Um, I don't like Tom Holland's Spider-Man because I feel they took so many Spider-Men and they combined it to make Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. I feel Tom Holland as an actor and as his as the writing, because, again, I don't think it's his fault for the writing in his individual movies. Right. But he's way better in the Avengers. Like, I feel whoever wrote the Avengers, you know yeah. what I mean, and besides the Russo Brothers directing or whatever, he's incredible. Absolutely incredible. In yeah, Civil he has the War, perfect wit, the perfect yeah. sarcasm in that, perfect. in his own films. It's not the Where same. is it? Exactly. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah. And then That's in, why I love Garfield so much. Garfield is actually my favorite yeah, because he has a perfect favorite. balance. You know what I think it is, is, and I get asked that question all the time, like, yo, man, who's, what's your favorite Spider-Man? And, like, mine is, I like all three. Everybody has their own distinct look. Because I always tell people, you can pick up a comic book from 1998 to right now. Peter Parker is never going to look the same. Mm -hmm. Either Peter Parker's got glasses or Peter Parker's got his head shaved a little bit. So they're never going to be the same. I think with Tom Holland, um believe it or not he's actually my favorite and the reason for it is this is when they they nailed the concept not just the witty part but the actual science part as well as the fact that he they made this guy a kid that was it simple as that that was a marketing tool and marvel said listen we're gonna bring this kid in and when I saw Captain America 3, that was it. That was like, okay, they literally got a kid from 2018 to play Spider-Man. And I think that was the marketing tool for that. So, yeah, I'm going I'm to challenge you. I don't even you. count it as Spider-Man. I mean, Cap 3, man. That wasn't a Cap movie. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was Avengers uh, 1.5. 1, 1 1. Yeah. yeah. So here, here's the deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Okay. So, for me, yes, I agree with you about the kid yeah. thing. Sure. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. But you took Miles Morales and you made him Peter Parker. And it pissed me off. Yeah. Because right. for that, you could just have Miles in there. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, his, his roommate is Miles' best friend. And then on top of that, you took Spider-Man, um, Superior Spider-Man. You took all the gadgets from Superior mm. Spider-Man, which is Doc Ock. And, you know, then you're using Peter Parker's name. So for me, I'm like, why are you combining all these Spider-Men when you easily could have had Miles Morales in it and then established an adult Peter Parker's out there somewhere? Yeah. Right. You see what I I'm got saying? You. I see it. You know what I think it is? I'm going to tell you what it is. And it's the newer generation, right? does not want to see the comic book version because to be, to be honest with you sometimes the younger generation doesn't want to read the comic books that we've read so it's just like it. <laughs> exactly it's just right. like aladdin right aladdin came out will smith played it will smith did a good job he will never be robin williams but what he did was he remixed it so what i think tom holland's spider-man did was he remixed it where we're used to a backstory with uncle ben none of that guess what that didn't happen now. Now, Uncle Ben's figure is more Tony Stark. So I think what they're doing is they're remixing it. And I think with the Spider-Verse movie, they're bringing it back. Like they're bringing it, they're saying, listen, you're not going to have a, a Mary Jane, but guess what? When you come back to this Spider-Verse, if you get lost in your own reality, guess what? You're going to meet Mary Jane. You're going to meet another uh, Aunt May, you're going to meet another Harry. So I think that's what they're kind of trying to tie in. No, I, and I uh, understand. It's just for me, no matter what, if you have somewhat comic, comic book integrity, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the people read it or not, they're still going to enjoy it. Now, right. for me personally, like I said, with that, Tom Holland is very good in the Avengers movies, not so much in uh, his own. Things. And right. the reason being is because Spider-Man, even though he was a teenager, he right. had the, at the time, he had one of the darkest stories of Marvel. And Absolutely. they did an homage to Batman because of it. His best friend was a gargoyle that he named Bruce. That was supposed to be the homage to Batman. And right. he had nobody to talk to but this gargoyle. Obviously, it's, you know, stone and it doesn't say anything. But that's what it was. He became a man early. Yep. And right. he had to learn with great power comes great responsibility. 
and you know he didn't have any superhero friends he fought against superheroes until he met human torch and that was his first best friend yada yada right. but anyway i digress the fact that tom holland cried and screamed out for somebody to help him in the first movie blew it for me as well i'm like this is ridiculous oh when the fact yeah, wait yeah, wait yeah. you're talking about with the, the rocks right yeah okay. absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. the fact that he has to rely on his suit when yep. he told yeah. tony i'm nothing without it killed me Be yep. and then on top of that none of the science from tom holland is his own it's tony's tech it's this and what even though you can we can argue that he built his own web shooters at the beginning everything else is tony's tech while andrew garfield and toby mcguire they're they very the intelligent in science yep. they right. did everything uh more like the comic book mm -hmm. and they had and then the reason why andrew garfield's my favorite is because the dark a lot of people didn't like the movies because they were dark I'm the like, imagery well, I I love love yeah I you love never it. picked up a comic book yep. whoever yeah. said that oh spider-man doesn't have a dark story never picked up a comic book mm -hmm. spider-man like the the pain that you see in Andrew Garfield's eyes and everything else, like, oh, dark. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah. this is incredible. Ooh, he's the Batman equivalent. They're both tortured souls. Absolutely. Yeah, I, mean? I agree. Very Absolutely. Agree. I like that. So, I like so that. I'm going to list my favorite Spider Spider-Man in order, then you boys, I want you to do it. So sure. mine mine will be this. My I think I think uh, Tobey Maguire is the best Peter Parker, hands down. He has the awkwardness. Mm -hmm. He has the silliness. <laughs> He has like that weirdness that a regular Peter Parker does have. I think he's my right. favorite on that. Okay. Uh, Andrew Garfield, my okay. favorite Spider-Man. Talking smack, happy-go-lucky, but torture soul as well. Incredible. Right. I think the performance, and then I would put Tom Holland last. For me, I will go Garfield as both Pete and, and Spidey because that chemistry he had with, uh, what's her name, Sally Field? As yes, I agree. The chemistry he had with Gwen, with Emma Stone was just right out of the park. And see, I'm a huge fan of uh, I don't know if you remember the uh, uh, animated series, uh, Spectacular Spider Man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so good. Garfield was spot on to Spectacular yes. Spider Man. Exactly. You know, I, both I, of his movies were spot on to Spectacular Spider Man. And then the reason why I didn't care for Toby so much, I loved everybody else in the movie. But Toby himself. That's my point. I love the suit, but he was such a crybaby, dude. The way Ram Ramey rolled him, he just cried the entire time, and that took me out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But like I said, it was everybody else. Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, uh, 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 what's your boy's name that you just mentioned earlier? Franco. 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 Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody else made the movie, like Carrie mm, yes. before him, especially and Alfred Molina. When yes. you mentioned Spider-Man 2, the movie, everybody says that's like the greatest Spider-Man movie. I was like, when it was kind of like the Dark Knight for me. When Molina wasn't on the screen, the movie was born. Right, exactly. <laughs> but when Molina came on the screen, he was the, he was everything that I read and saw of Doc Ock, video games, comic books, cartoons. That's that was what it. Alpha Molina was. So that Exactly. exactly. If it wasn't for the supporting cast, man. Uh, the, yeah. the Ramey McGuire movies. It, it just yeah. Didn't do it for me. You man, you <laughs> you nailed it. Like that. Like it's hard for me to put everybody on that plane of who's the best. But um, McGuire. The reason why McGuire was those movies were good was because of that supporting cast that he had. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not only that, I love the train scene. The train scene is oh one of my, my favorite God, scenes. That and fight. not even just the fight scene between Doc Ock. But, but the, the whole, whole sequence. The whole <laughs> sequence. Even at the end where, I mean, you know, all of the people that are on the, the subway train are just, you know, the two little kids that give him his mask saying, we won't tell anybody. That was just iconic. And I think that scene right there gave everybody that respect level of Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there's my drawback. There's my con on McGuire. Didn't like the organic web shooters, or you know what I mean. Came from his hand. I was not yeah. a fan of that. It grew but on me. I, I agree. It I agree on. with you on that <laughs> a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. Organic, yeah. Because I'm, I'm looking at. I'm like, oh my god. To be at organic web, you know? you're making him a mutant. <laughs> right. I always. Well, they're not only the cartoons. That. The number one thing on the cartoons always happened. What was his biggest mistake? 
Oh man, I ran out. I'm I out, ran of, out. Yep, I'm out of fluid. Now you have <laughs> infinite <laughs> web shooters because it Except, comes out of you. Except in Spider Man Two, what was it? He couldn't get it up. Uh, like Tony <laughs> said, performance issues. Yeah, that's why it didn't work. <laughs> so yeah, but that actually kind of grew on me. But like, like I said, I was like, yeah, that's you know, yeah. I got used to it. I was like, okay, yeah, it's something different. Yeah. But I didn't like it. But I was like, all right, we got to deal yeah. with it for three movies. Um, <laughs> yeah. But Garfield is my second one. I, what I liked about Garfield what was really good. Garfield was the first time I ever saw Spider-Man emotional. So it, there, and it, and it went back on the backstory. It didn't just say, hey, this is Peter Parker, Uncle Ben, Aunt May. No, it went back to here's Peter's parents. So now you're seeing that tortured soul, the reason why he's a tortured soul. So it was that emotional connection. The funny part about all of the Garfield movies is somebody's always dying. You know what I mean? And it, like, that's what the emotional part where it's Gwen Stacy's dad, Gwen Stacy, you know, that's the emotional connection. And um, that was good on that end. The only problem that I had with Garfield was on Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I think they jammed a lot of villains in there at one time and it overwhelmed the audience. You know what I'm saying? Like it overwhelmed like we had the Rhino and Electro and then you saw like some guy oh, walking God. through. You know what I mean? It was too much and it overwhelmed everybody. And a lot of people didn't know how to take that. That's probably my I problem. was looking forward to seeing what was going to happen with Norman. Yeah. Because when you saw his hand, I was like, oh, shit. Ultimate Goblin. Ultimate Goblin. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I was looking for that demonic uh, goblin. And then next thing you know, they canceled him in Marvel. It was like, oh, yeah. Okay, well, also, to be <laughs> fair, you know, <laughs> Andrew Garfield got fired for basically saying the truth. They yeah. were like, hey, why is it? you know, so chopped up and so many villains and stuff. And he said it, it, it was like a Zack Snyder thing. He was like, when you have this beautiful script and we film all these scenes and you take out the most important scenes, yeah. Yeah. Of, of course you're going to get what you got in the theater. And right. you know, the Sony execs didn't like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. but like to what you said, man, some of the scenes that stood out the most with me, and this is why I love Garfield and Roll, because mm -hmm. he put so much into it was right. the scenes of loss yeah. so yeah. just like when captain stacy died at the hands of the lizard and you just saw him like lashing out and crying and right, angry right. it was like oh shit, i'm fucked up and then he made the promise to him that he was going to stay away from going that yeah. was like powerful then in part two you know what i mean with the loss of gwen he loses his shit. yeah and, yeah exactly exactly you know and and even with harry he was like you know I mean, That's, Garfield just played the role so well. I let me tell you something. I love that guy. I think it's, uh, oh my god, That's the best yeah. Harry. Best Harry yeah. ever. Oh, a lot of people sure. didn't like him, but I actually liked him. Man. Oh, he he the, nailed it. Yeah. He, I mean, literally. And like I said, they left that wide open too. If you watch the end of that, they mm -hmm. left that really wide open. So I wouldn't be surprised, even though he said he's not in it, that he pops up in it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But oh, Holland yeah. is my favorite, and what I like with Holland is um, they showed one aspect of Spider-Man Holland that they didn't show with everybody else, is they showed him being a human being. Like, they, mm -hmm. they showed him mess up, and I mean, we remember when we were watching the cartoons, the cartoons, he was always, like, messing up here, losing his web, or, you know having a hard time to speak to certain people. And I think that's what made it, made the connection and that marketing tool to say, hey, look, we're gonna make this an actual 16 year old kid. We're not gonna have somebody that looks like a 16 year old kid, but they're really 25, but they're gonna have that 16 year old teenager to play Spider-Man. And I think that was the biggest marketing tool. And here's another thing. Number one reason I love him, does his own stunts, boom. Well, Garfield did his stunt. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 he did a lot of stunts, stunts. But yeah. Holland is pretty. Holland's his background with dance and everything like yeah. that. No, just, I, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, um, but like I, I said, I think Holland. what's gonna happen is I think 
the the actual Spider-Mans that you guys are going to get are going to be in this movie. I think I think when they say No Way Home, this is the this is what I wanted to ask you. Is No Way Home saying that Spider-Man is going into another universe and he can't find his way home or do you think that the villains are going to his universe and can't find no way home? I think it's the other way around since he's going to be in uh, Strange. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's that... setting up Doctor Strange too. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think okay. I think No Way Home is uh... okay. So again, let's play devil's advocate. Okay. No Way Home could be that Peter Parker could never be normal again. You know what I mean? Mm, he's okay. Spider Man. Everyone fucking knows he's Spider Man. That's oh, it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's mm-hmm. no way home. There's no way to be normal again. Now you yeah. have to be on the run and all the shit. That could possibly be it. And that's the reason why I told you about Madam Web is because remember who erased everyone's mind mm-hmm. from, oh, who's Peter Parker in the comic books? Right. Wasn't it Madam Web? Am, am, I, am I mistaken on that? If I recall, yeah, it was her. Mm-hmm. So yeah, either which way, if it was her or somebody else, let, let's say first, because I'm kind of thinking something else, but you erase everyone's mind and then the comic books, including MJ, so that she doesn't know you're Spider-Man anymore. Right. That's why I mentioned Madam Web. I'm like, think about it. You cannot go back. You can't. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows who you are. Mm-hmm. Right. But to be fair, like you're saying. If it is true that you have these multiple universes, this may be not Andrew's universe, not Toby's universe, not the MCU universe. It may be this brand new Spidey universe that you're saying. Because now, with the multiverse, if this is a brand new universe that also connects Venom, because they're trying to connect Venom to it, then right. yeah, then it's no way back to the MCU. Now he, now Spider-Man's gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. That That's it. There's no Spidey there, which, if that happens, could leave room for Miles Morales to be in the MCU. Right. While all the other Spider-Man are gone. Or, like Marcus said, if Doctor Strange 2 opens that... Because which one comes first? This one or Doctor Strange? Uh, no way. Spider-Man comes first. Spider-Man. Yeah. Doctor Strange comes out next year. There you go. So... Doctor Strange could be the reason why he comes back to this universe. We don't know, but I'm leaning towards, I'm leaning towards that is that it's more of a pun that he can't be safe, like right. everyone right. everyone knows. But like you said, with the whole Sony uh, Sony universe, man, it could be that he could be trapped in the Sony universe for, from now on, indefinitely. Right. And with their current success with Venom, you know, yeah, you can see. How it goes. Because Sony. Speaking of Venom. That was the uh, crapshoot. Uh, it was going down here until uh, they released Spidey to, you know, Marvel, Disney, and then the success of Venom, yep. you know, blew up beyond what they expected. So. Yeah. Yeah. Ian, you were saying that, and this is crazy, Marcus, because like mm-hmm. I said, me and Ian kind of touched base on stuff. Ian thinks that because Ian sent me. Um, their thoughts sony's thoughts of like what they would like to do Mm -hmm. for like their own mcu pretty much um the lethal protectors is supposed to be coming out lethal protectors has riot in it yeah now lethal protector has riot in it so then i i asked ian i was like wait riot's supposed to die in venom one ian thinks that riot is survived the symbiote absolutely 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 because think know. about it. Because here, here's the thing that I say, right? Right? How does Carnage become Carnage? He becomes Carnage with a little bit of venom. So, if you only need a little bit of that symbiote, he's still alive. He ain't gonna be the riot that we know, but he's gonna be that riot. That but then again, knows. you know, with that explosion on the uh, on the space bear. On right. the rocket, we didn't yeah, see but right. Venom, but, but Venom, but Venom, as well. Venom also burned. So a pieces of him, yeah, could have been exactly. left out, and that's how it ends up in uh, Cletus's arm and all that stuff when he's uh, uh about to be uh, uh what do you call it? Lethal injection. Yeah. yeah. 
Now, the craziest thing is, I honestly think that the villains and Peter Parker are going into another universe. And the reason why I say that is because at the end of Morbius, you see Michael Keaton's character, which is the Vulture. Mm -hmm. And he says, hey, Doc, how you doing? That freaked everybody out. I think that was one of the biggest clues of that multiverse thing. Like, it's, it's really happening. So I think Wait, that... Oh, you don't remember that? You haven't seen that, Danny? If what? you go look at the uh, Morbius trailer, oh, man. Uh, they reveal Michael Keaton. Yeah. It's in, just in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah. How did mm -hmm. I miss that? No That's way. in the oh, very wow. first trailer. Dude. The very Dude, first how did I miss that? How did yeah. I miss that? Yep. Yeah. It's at the end oh, of the trailer. That man. was like that was like the mic drop. Everybody lost their shit. That's <laughs> that's why I think what you're talking about with Tom Holland that you don't like, I think you're gonna see that Tom Holland now that you want to see in this new one where he goes into another universe where he doesn't see Zendaya. He might see the real Mary Jane that reminds him of MJ. And he might see Aunt May that reminds him of Aunt May. Another thing that I, I forgot to tell you is they caught Sally Fields uh, covered up doing like a little screenshot. Really? So, oh, I love that, her as Aunt May, man. So I, I honestly, this is my theory. I think one, I think the scrolls are all a part of this because we saw mm -hmm. the scrolls at the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing, I know this is Falcon and Winter Soldier, but I think... Um, the power broker, of course, Sharon, whatever. I think Sharon's a scroll. I'm gonna say it. Hmm. Interesting. Dude, I called so her the I, power broker from the as soon yeah, as I yeah, saw her, I bro. Yeah, like yeah, I said, Van Falcon and Winter Soldier, I was like, ah. But I think Marvel is not that quick to be like, okay, that's it. Mar yeah. you know how Marvel is. Marvel's like, man, we're gonna give we're gonna give you a little taste. And if the power broker was a scroll, which would make sense because nobody knows what the power broker looks like mm -hmm. because they can change, you know, shift change, whatever the case is, then that would be nuts, which would make sense on are the people that were in Endgame actually the Avengers or were some of them playing as scrolls like Tony Stark? Ooh. Well, here's the deal. Now I'm going to play Super Devil's Advocate with a couple of things. Okay. <laughs> you ready for it? I Here have to go. ask some crazy shit. Here we go. What if the major character that dies is Tom Holland? Mm. And then bring even though out. he said that he is open for multiple Spider-Man movies, right, does not mean that he won't die. Yeah. Which, wait, like I said, it could it could be that it could be Tom Holland uh, that dies and Garfield takes over, because really the SPUMC. Mm. It started because of the Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man. Yep. So it could be that Garfield takes over. Or here, here we go. Now, now you're you're, you're touching in territory about like scrolls and stuff like that. Okay. Right. So I called this from the get-go, and I know you guys saw it, my WandaVision videos. Mm -hmm. I said that Loki is the reason why the timelines are going to go all fucked up, right? Right. I'm very sure that that has to do with something with this new. Um, spider-man movie as well as well yep now remember they want loki to bring it all into one timeline right right and i, I called it and stuff like that maybe loki doesn't do it that's why dr strange has to do it all i know is they're trying to bring everything from all the entities into one timeline right 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 okay so here's here here's the deal i can see if not RDJ, I can see someone else from like a multiverse Iron Man coming in or a multiverse cap coming in. Does that make sense? Like I can see that happening, especially from that storyline that you sent me of the Absolutely. Dark Avengers with Absolutely. all the Captain Americas came together to Boom. fight. And even yeah. old man Steve Rogers was there, which right. to bring Chris Evans back as that. Yeah, so absolutely. what do you what do you boys think about that? Those two things. Well, you know, uh what's her name is getting her own show. Um uh, what's the black girl's name that became Iron Iron uh Iron Iron Heart? Heart. Yeah. Iron Heart, yeah. She's getting her own Disney Plus show. So I know they're trying matching, to do young Avengers, man, but I'm still yeah, like, matching her with Tom Holland's age and everything and bringing in those 
new characters. Yeah, um, I I can see where you're going, but they're gonna they're gonna bring in a new new generation of characters. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're going in the direction of the Dark Avenger, Avengers, man. I think they're gonna, like you said, I think they're gonna bring in a different cap. You know, who who knows? I think it would be crazy if they did the whole end game at the end of the movie where they're fighting Thanos and you're seeing a whole different cast. So instead of RDJ, you're seeing Tom Cruise or you're seeing, you know what I'm saying? The exact, I mean, the exact same, but you're seeing like different actors. That would be nuts. That would be nuts. Mm. What do you guys uh, think of... uh... I can't think of the actor's name, but the one that plays Ned, you know, with his weight loss, you know, he becomes Hobgoblin in, in the comics. Yes, so he does become Hobgoblin. Do you think that he would become Hobgoblin in No Way Home? Ooh, that's a good one, bro. I think you know because he, he lost a shit ton of weight. He Have you did. Seen him? He, he looks good. He looks good. He looks yeah. good, man. Um, I think it's <laughs> gonna think happen Willem in Defoe? another multiverse. But do you think mm. Willem Dafoe may like? take him you know and that's how yeah. he becomes hobgoblin I, I, I don't know but i'm like man it'd be it'd be interesting if he becomes Yo. hobgoblin in this movie that'd be sick bro yep. oh my god yeah. and did he cut his hair too mm-hmm. yeah he cut his oh, hair so he, shit. oh hell so bro. like i said it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts like it that's what's crazy about this movie is the possibilities man yeah, like so much the movie can go this way it's gonna go this way yeah. That's going to set the whole tone for any superhero movie where they're going to say, man, you know, we got to bring this in. We got to bring that in. We got to bring this. And we got to bring people from the, the past. You might see Batman, like I said, do that, which would be nuts. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. is J.K. Simmons coming back? Oh, he yeah. has to. Yeah, he's got to. Especially when him popping up in the last movie. Is he? Is he I, I haven't checked the IMDb yet, so that's why I was yeah. wondering if he was going to And like, that's why I said it's so secretive. I think they're yeah. This is one of my thing. I think they're gonna drop that trailer now. Today is Memorial Day. Okay, I think they're gonna drop that trailer tomorrow. No, I don't way. think they're gonna drop it until uh, what Loki comes out Friday, right? Yep. The six. Yeah. I think they'll drop it Friday. It could. The reason why I say that is, um, they dropped the they dropped a couple of trailers on people's birthdays. Tom mm-hmm. Holland's birthday is tomorrow. Kevin uh, Feige's yeah. birthday is June second, so I think we're getting that. Yeah. Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. He might be. Yes. Well, this week rather it's coming out. Yeah, it's coming out. Yeah, that's what I said. It's coming well, at out. least a teaser. Let's, listen, at least a teaser. Yeah. <laughs> you know we got to do another one of these if we see the trailer. We'll be like, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> for real, man. Wow. So okay. So now, well, with more speculation, right. um, do you think? How do you think the Eternals is going to connect to all this? Oh because my god, obviously. The fans like I didn't. I'm not gonna lie to you. I saw the Eternals trailer and I was like, "It was yeah. garbage." Yeah, garbage. Like, yeah. <laughs> really? Me, I'm like, dude, because for real, you you don't give us anything in the trailer, right. and then on top of that, you're like, "We're not interfering until now." Like the fans are backlashing so much because we're like, "Okay, how in the fuck did you not step in?" Yeah. When Thanos, you know, was eliminated. There? 50% of the universe. Yeah, have to be right. <laughs> like, so, this is my theory. Um, okay. I think the Eternals are going to deal with the Infinity Stones. And I think the Eternals, some, remember, Thanos wiped out half of the universe. I think that they might have, some of them might have not been there. And here's the crazy part. So Thena, which is Angelina Jolie's character, because I read the comic books, is the cousin of Thanos. So you might see a young Thanos in this movie. Ah. That'd be sick if Josh Brolin returns. What is it? Um, I know the the villain. They actually they actually the released the villain, villain on accident. The scrolls are the villains in this, right? No, okay. absolutely not. Hold on. Eternals main villain. They uh they accidentally they accidentally release well not accidentally, I should say accidentally. So movies tend to do this and which ruins movies. Um they end up releasing action figures before the oh, movies yeah, come out. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. And then what ends up happening is it ends up ruining the movie. So yeah. 
the action figure that they released was uh crow k-r-o okay uh, okay oh i know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, yep. cool. and yeah, so yeah, yeah. he looks different than the comics obviously in his uh in his action figure but they're saying because that released the action figure released that he is the main villain mm. for this movie so that's what i'm saying like i'm like uh, you, you know what <laughs> i mean I'm, i don't know man i'm just I, I think it's leading all the way up to Fantastic Four. It's all you really like, think all, so? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's because that's, 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 that's going to be the big thing for them. Yeah, like all as soon as I saw Ronan the Accuser in that movie, which is he's been in what um, a couple of movies. He's been in Gar, you know, uh, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy mm-hmm. stuff like that's that. A lot of people don't realize this, but Ronan the Accuser is the son of Thanos. A lot of people don't know that, but he's actually the son of Thanos. So I think they're leading that up. It's going to be, you know, Galactus. It's going to be Silver Surfer. It's going to lead all the way up there. I mean, now you're looking at Fury up where Sword is. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like yeah. it's going in that direction. And like I said, the MCU is going this way. Spider-Man is going to go this way, but kind of come around and boom, meet. You think they ever going to introduce Lady Death? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. yeah. That would be really good. <laughs> Listen. Really good. All I'm saying is if they introduce Lady Death, they have to do the shtick yeah. of Deadpool falling in love with Lady Death. But yes. Now, Charlie Stan will be perfect for Lady Death. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And Ryan Reynolds humping her yeah. leg. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> like, dude. Come on, because you know, <laughs> don't get me wrong. She she's a beautiful woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she, she she's hot, man. But dude, having Ryan Reynolds falling in love with Lady Death, yeah, it's gonna be incredible. The only thing is that I, you know, obviously Thanos is not in it because he curses him with immortality because of that BS. Remember? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that would be really cool, man. That'd be really cool to see. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Like. Is like you said, Ian. There's so many possibilities of like way that where they can go with it. It's right. really like it's coming out of my realm because I'm more of a Spider-Man fan, like you are. I'm yes. more of like the main MCU. Once you start going off with like like Guardians of the Galaxy and other things and yada yada, I'm telling you, like that right there. I'm just yeah. like, oh, that is not my field. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, I, that's why I said I think Spider-Man is coming to Sony and taking up that mantle of that universe. Because um, what one is thing he going to do, to be honest? Think exactly. One thing that you showed me was that trailer for, I mean, I was watching your commentary for that trailer for Venom 2, and I literally saw Toxin. If you look and you pause it, yes. you yes. see that Daily Bugle. So it's like, oh man, you know what I mean? Like, is Holland or whoever plays Spider-Man going to be in there, you know, with that Daily Bugle? Because it's there, you know what I'm saying? And the way Morbius and the way Venom 2 is, it's so dark. You might see other characters from the shows come out. You might see the Punisher. You might, you know what I mean? There's so many possibilities. Because I don't technically see, like, Daredevil and all of them somewhat in the MCU, but I do see them connected with Spider-Man. Hmm. Yeah, but also if you're talking about Fantastic Four, we just touched on his best friend is the Human Torch. Bingo, exactly, exactly. Hmm. So, so now that we're talking about like other characters in the Spider Universe, right. what's you all's take on Aaron Taylor Johnson? Being yeah, mummy. I love him as an actor. Now this is my take. I love him as an actor. Right, he's fucking kick ass. Right, <laughs> he, he, he kind of stole the show in Tenet. Right. If you watch that crazy movie, uh, but I'm like, had, had not been PH or already, you know what I mean? I'm like, the casting is kind of off for me. But then again, I'm like, here we go with the multiverse thing. So right. because of the fact that he was PHO and then Wanda mm-hmm. recasted him with uh uh. uh 
Boner. Boner. I can't think of the, <laughs> I can't think of the actor's name right now. Peter but Evans. But that quick scene. Yeah, yeah. No, not uh, Peter Evans. What is it? Evan Peters? I, <laughs> Evan yeah. Peters. Yeah. I said that then on it kinda makes, in my review yeah. before. <laughs> Evan Peters. <laughs> <laughs> it make, it kind of makes sense that, uh, uh, you know, that he could be crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Oh, my I, God. I think... Uh, I actually like it. Still has me scratching my head in the same universe. Yeah, it it actually grew on me, Um, and the reason why it grew on me is because he's not the first actor of Marvel that has been recasted. Well, it's different though. It's different, right? Yeah, nobody has played. It's only one actor in the MCU that has played two different characters in the same universe, and that was. I can't think of the character's name, but he was in Agents of Shield, and he's Peggy's. Uh, I mean, not Agents of Shield, Peggy Carter, and he was uh, her partner. But he yeah. was a cop. He was an NYC cop in the first Avengers movie. He had right. a small little role. And in the first here's the crazy Avengers part: movie. the the second person is actually the NYC girl cop. from the Eternals. He, he's the only actor that's ever played two different, huh? But Breaking the up. other one is the girl from the Eternals. Which one? The the Asian one. I think her name is Gemma Chan. Now she her character, yeah, she's actually in Captain Marvel. What? She? Yeah, Yo, Gemma don't Chan. Tell me, don't tell me they're gonna tie it with Captain Marvel. No, 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 Gemma no, no. no. Two We're just characters. saying like the actors that's been recasted as different people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, in the same universe. That's that's what we. Thought. Yeah, Gemma, well, technically... so Gemma Chan um, was in Captain Marvel. And I saw her and I was like, wait a minute, she looks familiar and come to come to find out she's the leader of, yeah, you know, well, not the, one of the leaders of the yeah. Eternal. I didn't know. So, that. Okay. Well, yeah, like I had to like, you know, look it, look it up. But <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Technically, Josh Brolin. Because even Deadpool makes a joke. He says, calm down, Thanos. Well, that's 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 if if if. Well, yeah, I guess you. You could say Deadpool is officially going to be in the MCU. He's officially so, in the yeah. MCU now, but remember, yeah, he yeah. he tells Cable, yeah. calm down, Thanos. Yeah. 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 And so, <laughs> but I mean, like, there's other, like I said, there's other act, actors and actresses that have been in Marvel movies that have been in the MCU and then have been like, look at Chris Evans. Chris Evans was Human Torch and then he turned into Captain America. Uh, well, but that wasn't MCU, though, remember. Right, yeah, time, not yeah. in the MCU, but you know what Same I mean? Same thing like, with Michael B. Jordan, you know. Right, as, so, as but Craven's not Kingdom. a part of the MCU, though. Craven is a part of the that new Sony universe. So, yeah, true. Um, I think I think he's going to do a great job. Oh, yeah, I love because, him. Because, you know what I think they're doing with this? They're not just throwing in the character as the villain. They're now mm-hmm. showing you, kind of like what they did with the Joker. They're showing you how this guy became the Joker, showing you how he became Craven. Yeah. So they wanted more of that younger look, even though they asked for a couple of people. I think they're going saying, listen, we're going to show you how this guy became Craven and why the last hunt was Spider Man. Mm-hmm. You oh, might Craven. Even it. Craven is my favorite Spider Girl, to be oh, honest. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Craven was always my favorite. It, it was Craven, Carnage, Kingpin. Venom, and then Chameleon. Those okay. are those are my okay. favorite. Those are my favorite Spidey villains. So Venom, <laughs> Venom, I never really technically considered a villain um, as much as an anti-hero because he's my favorite mm-hmm. anti-hero. But I have yeah. to say, as a villain, as much as I love the symbiotes, you can't go wrong with Doc Ock, man. Doc Ock yeah. I felt like is one of the greatest, besides Green Goblin, obviously, one of the greatest Spidey villains ever. Yeah, I mean. For God's sakes, he's the only one that's able to kill Spider-Man that in the superior. That's how he becomes superior Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Like, dude. You know? Yeah. He was the only one that could like rival him on every level, too. Yeah, to man. Honest, so, it was yeah. nuts. I could I, I I agree with that. But as far as just like I just it, it Craven was just such a badass. <laughs> he's just such a badass. You know what I mean? He was just that is true. Dude. That is true. There's, no argue, there's no arguing with that. That is very true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, I, I'm excited. Like I said, I, I was a fan of uh, 
Johnson's man, Kick Ass is like Kick Ass is one of my favorite movie. comics, and I love the adaptation, the movie. Part two wasn't as good, but it was still a fun watch. But Aaron Taylor Johnson is he's a good actor, dude. And I'm looking very forward good. to see very, very good actor. what he does in the role, man. And uh interesting to see who will be his uh who they'll cast as his leading lady because she was such a badass character too. Yeah. You know? yeah see, I agree. Absolutely. I agree with you there. I think he's a great actor. I'm just afraid of you know, I I feel like Sony makes a lot of hit and misses, you yeah. know. And that's the that's mm-hmm. the only challenge I have. I think he's a good actor, but do I really want to see him no. as Craven? Not saying that he can pull it off. You you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with Jared Leto. I think Jared Leto is a phenomenal actor, but he just didn't do it for, for me for Joker. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, will he do Morbius a good job? I don't know yet. You know what I mean? Like I really have to see that after the whole Joker thing. I'm like, ah, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, but. You're you're right, Aaron Taylor Johnson. I think he's incredible as an actor, but I want to see him because he wasn't my favorite as Pietro. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. I liked him. I loved him in Kick Ass. Like you guys, I loved him in Kick Ass. But as Pietro, wasn't my wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. Well, I would love to see <laughs> what he does with this character. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that that's why I'm on the fence. If if, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Right. I uh, know. Uh, I I understand. I totally agree. If I you totally uh, agree. if you watch him in Tenet, he doesn't have a big role, but it is a pivotal role. Okay. Uh, you, I could see him going. That character was kind of like you know he was a military guy in Tenet. Right. Right. Uh, right. So he had that darkness to him, his character and everything. So, right. I was like when I found out that. They cast him as Craven. I was like, "Oh shit, okay." <laughs> you know? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, after I was watching Tenet, Keanu I was Reeves, like, "Man, I love Keanu, but as Craven, I was like, yeah, I, you know, my fingers are still crossed for Keanu to be revving in the Star Wars." Keanu, like, I think what happens <laughs> with Cra- yeah, and I think sometimes with Craven is, and just even with movies, our expectations is based off the look versus yeah. The- performance you know what i'm saying yeah. yeah and and i think sometimes we like most people say oh you know why don't the, why, why isn't it jason momoa and i'm i'm telling people oh, like, no, I, I never i said jason momoa had long hair i said i don't realize i don't think that craven had like long long hair it could happen but it's that look you know what i'm saying so i think it's it's a two-part package the look and the performance yeah there so, are three actors I said if they were ever to bring Craven to live action, there were three actors that I felt could play. Gerard Ooh, Butler. Yes. Okay. Uh 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 Liev Schreiber. Ooh. Okay. okay. And then his younger brother Pablo. All right. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, you ha- have I you watched uh, American oh. Gods? Yes. Pablo was the Irish. Uh okay. uh. Yeah, Pablo is a beast of actor, dude. Den of Thieves. Gotcha. Yeah, Den of Thieves okay. by 50 Cent. He's in that. Which, which Sabretooth are you talking about? Are you talking about X-Men Origins, Wolverine? Yeah, Lee yeah, F. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to make sure I got the right person in my head. Yeah, yeah man, yo. Those three were the three actors I was like would have been perfect. For crazy. I think you nailed it on the head. I think if he doesn't yeah, come that's, back... Yeah, that, that is real good, yeah. Yeah, if he doesn't come back as Sabretooth... He would have been phenomenal, yeah. As Craven, yeah. like you know, you know who bro, my fan cast for Craven that, is. That bro? was an incredible casting, Marcus. I'm sorry, man. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to get in the casting. That's incredible, bro. I actually made my first casting uh, last week for a movie, so oh, hey, I'm trying hey, to get bro. Good shit. <laughs> hey, yeah. Mine, yeah. my Craven would actually be Pedro Pascal. Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. That's what a good he one. did. What he did that's in Game of Thrones. One. If that, yeah, is that character. If that's yeah. not Craven, man, that's a good one. That's <laughs> a good one. I forgot that that was Pedro Pascal. Oh yeah, you until, forgot? Yeah, I forgot. Dude. Yo, until you said it. <laughs> oh, yo. Yep. If I had yeah. to redo Spider Man over, my fan casting would be yeah. Yeah. Pedro. Pedro would have been great too. Yep. Yo, that that yeah. is dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. But to be honest, though, like I said, I don't, I don't think Pedro Pascal is good. But Marcus, you hit it on the head. Yeah, you leave Saber Sabretooth, yeah. man. Oh, 
Yo. That dude, he was the best thing in that movie. Yes, he <laughs> was. Oregon. And and for real though, <laughs> even though I forgot the original actor's name in X Men One. Uh, even though Tyler May. There you go. Even yeah. though he looked like Sabretooth, right? They didn't give him enough to do. Exactly. Well, That's besides enough. that. I didn't feel like that was Sabretooth. He right. Was the cartoon, he was the 90s cartoon Sabretooth. Well, not even yeah. that because he didn't have enough dialogue, but he had to look Regardless, like he said. Regardless, the yeah. little bit that he did, it wasn't the presence yeah. of Sabretooth. But right. when you watch X-Men Origins, come on, bro. Shriver was a beast, man. <laughs> he was a he, beast. He was too yeah. good, bro. He was intimidating. He was. He had the, you know, gravitas. Like you said, he had that screen presence. You know what I mean? And then not only that, him playing with Hugh Jackman, you felt mm-hmm. like, yep, they're brothers. Yep. 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 Absolutely. That's why I was hoping, I wish they would have brought him in to uh, Logan. Oh. Because mm-hmm. the rumor, the rumor was he was supposed to have been the villain again instead of uh, Logan's clone. Oh my god, yo. That right there would have been the dopest to yep. end off, be off Sabretooth versus Wolverine. Because he was supposed to have an Animanium <laughs> too. That was the rumor. He was supposed to have an Animanium finally. Yeah. You know? Man, I, I don't even care <laughs> about that. But the end all and be all how it ends it was the way it starts that's the rule of mm-hmm. improv man the ending yep, is in yeah. the beginning or just stories in general yep, the yeah. ending is in the beginning that would have been dope man yep. oh yeah oh. like one of my things if you look up i don't know if you remember when origins came out they released individual cast videos to promote the, the film in character so you had Ryan Reynolds as Wade doing his, you know, swords yes, and yeah, everything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yep. Watch Liev Schreiber's video. It do like it'll give you chills. <laughs> like it's like a little short. It's not even thirty seconds. It's like fifteen seconds maybe. But his monologue in that little video it just gives you chills, man. Dope. Yeah. Right. I got I got another good fan cast, and I want to know from you guys now. Danny, what you did say is they said they are bringing another Norman Osborn in to meet with William Defoe or whatever the case is. Again, who it's a rumor. Be, it's a rumor. With a rumor. If they were to do that, who would be your Norman Osborn? Ooh, Kelsey went Grammer. There. Flip Ooh. everybody on their head from Beast to Norman Osborn. Born. Kelsey okay. Grammer. Okay. Y'all are going to hate me for this answer. <laughs> But yeah. I think he, I think he's crazy enough to do it. You ready for it? Who is it? Nicholas Cage. Mm. Uh, okay, okay, I can kind of see it. No, think about it, man. Especially as of late, because his movies as of late, his horror films as of late, yeah, have been yeah. more serious and and he's been pretty dark. I can Not see only that. that, imagine. Imagine him having uh, wh- when did he have short hair? It wasn't what was it? The Rock that he had short hair? The Rock mm-hmm. face off. Face off. Yeah. Now, tell me that's not the same haircut as Norman Osborn in the comic, or even uh, Kiss of Death. Have you seen him in Kiss of Death? Yes, I did see Kiss of Death. Oh, oh, he was crazy as fuck in the movie. <laughs> he was off the train in the movie. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could see it. Uh. I would also say Anthony Starr, Homelander. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. I like that. All right, Anthony Ian, Starr really. is such an underrated right. actor. Like people, people only know him for Homelander. Go watch Banshee. Go okay. watch Banshee. He is a freaking beast of an actor in Banshee. Dude. He, okay, Anthony Starr is a good actor. Yeah, he would be a good Norman. Okay. Um, if I had to do it, it would be acting plus it's a marketing role just because everybody knows him when they see him. Um, I think he can play this role. I think he could play the more suave Norman Osborn. I'm going to go with Andrew McConaughey. Oh, you mean Matthew McConaughey? Matthew McConaughey. Sorry. Matthew no. McConaughey. Yeah, yeah, that would yeah. that would be dope. That would be dope. Especially if you've seen him in the in the gentleman. 
Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. Matthew McConaughey. Oh, yeah, that would I'll, be I'll take you one step further. All What's right. That? I'll raise you. <laughs> if he didn't do, ready? You ready? You're gonna. If he was not Cletus Cassidy, Woody Harrelson. Oh, he would have be been perfect. Dope. Nor he would have been perfect. Oh yeah. Absolutely. He would have been perfect. Man. Perfect. Absolutely. You know what I'm hoping for though? And that's the only reason why I didn't say him is because we're talking about the Spider Verse, mm. and most likely he's gonna be Cletus in that Spider Verse regardless. So for me, that's why I passed him up. But he would be my first choice if, like, let's say for instance, he wasn't Cletus, he'd be my first choice as Norman. Okay, Oscar. okay. Now I'm about, I'm about to flip y'all on your head, and y'all gonna oh, laugh boy. at me at this. Here we go. It was just a. It ended up being more than just a rumor back in the day, but uh, when Man of Steel came out, the rumor was that Denzel was supposed to be Lex, right? And it, it wound up being almost true. Like they made the pitch to him and everything. What if he ended up being Norman? Denzel Is it Washington. Yeah, Dude, I would. That would be. Okay. It he would had be, the red. He had the red hair as Malcolm X. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Listen, so, it would be the most. Un- that would be the most unconventional casting ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, it is. Denzel, it's like, though, hold up. Hold up, man. Denzel. Yep. Because, oh, like know. I said, he was rumored to be Lex Luthor in the man. I know. You know, back then. <laughs> if we're going with unconventional now, <laughs> if we're going with unconventional. Hold up now. Not, 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 not things are brewing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, who has that wave of hair? You know what I'm saying? Like, now I'm just thinking right, like comics right, now. Right. Oh, man. He he did have that slick red hair in Malcolm X. That is true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so. that is true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think Denzel would be way better as somebody else, even if it was unconventional. Yeah, I would feel that Denzel would be like way better. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Like, like, let's say for instance, uh, I feel Denzel would have been a hell of a like, um. What's his name? God, can't think of it right now. I would have loved him as Harvey Dent, especially after uh, uh, Billy B played Harvey Dent in '89 Batman. Denzel would. That's been true, nice. but I think Denzel's <laughs> just such a serious like actor. You know but what he, I'm saying? Serious. He could play a villain though. That's what I'm he saying. Like, <laughs> like, okay, I'll give you this example. If Josh Brolin wasn't Thanos, I could see Denzel being Thanos. You know what I mean? Like, he's such a serious. Yeah. Yeah. serious actor does that make sense yeah like right. i feel i feel like that would have to do him justice I, he I would have like been Norman, I, so you could see him as being a more powerful villain yeah someone that's like really dark and yeah. serious bro you know what yeah. i'm saying like okay. someone that makes you really think you know that's yeah, i got it. i think that's why i think lex luther is good for him because mm-hmm. he's that serious but also yeah. he's that intelligent does that yeah. make sense yeah he's fucking genius <laughs> I got another one. Damien Lewis. As in? Oh, is that my dude from, uh, 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 what was that movie? Dreamcast. Damien Lewis. Yes. I love that dude, man. He is such a great show. Damien Lewis. Billions. Billions is a great show. Billions is a great show. Yes. That would be it. Yeah. He's a damn good actor. He is a damn good actor, man. Yes. Yeah, Damian Damn. Lewis is off the chain, dude. I like him. Speaking of Devil's Advocate, what about uh, you know his name, uh, Marcus, the dude that plays Lucifer? Al Pacino. That be oh that no bad. no no! Oh, you talking about uh uh, Tom um, what's Tom's name? Uh, it starts with Tom, E, right? Tom Ellis. Ellis. Yeah. That'd be a dope one to be suave. Suave, uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, he could pull it off. Yeah, he could and he's good at right. accents. He, it's not like he can't do an American accent. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's good, man. Damn, <laughs> you guys are you guys are killing it with casting, though, man. Damn, fan casting, man. Like I said, one of my favorite fan casts that they've never done, believe it or not, is uh, if I had to redo everything over, instead of Tom Holland, I would actually pick. Dylan O'Brien as my Peter Parker. Damn. Thank you. From Maze Runner. He would have been perfect. <laughs> yeah. Team Wolf. You know what's funny? You know Team what's Wolf, funny? dude. 
Style. I love. Style I stories. love you guys. I love you guys for picking character like actors and stuff like that because it just goes to show where my head has been. I've been yeah. watching shows and movies like as a director and cinematographer, like the vision of the story. Mm-hmm. While you guys are like, oh, these guys are amazing actors. Like this is why I love this combination of Absolutely. us, man. Absolutely. Incredible. Yeah, um, Dylan O'Brien would have been the Dylan O'Brien perfect. would have been perfect as Peter Parker. If you just not even looking at Maze Runner, if you just watch him in Tingle as Styles still Oh, absolutely. His, absolutely. His, his his sarcasm, his comedy, and he could even go dark because the third season of uh Tingle, where he actually plays yeah. a villain, yep. where he plays Void oh. Styles. Hold oh on. my fucking god, dude. What do you think? Now, this is crazy. This is super crazy. It just popped into my head. And for the viewers out there, don't mind me. I think of stupid shit all the time. All right. What do you think about the kid that played Jerome in Gotham as Norman Osborn? Oh, uh, mm. uh, Cameron Monaghan. Yeah. As yeah. Norman, too young. Too young. As, as uh, uh, Harry. Harry, yes. Come on, man. Perfect. One of the two. Three. Yeah, as Harry, perfect. But yeah, Cameron Monaghan is, he's such an underrated actor, dude. Insane, yeah. bro. Such an underrated actor, yep. man. Yeah. He, he's, he's from Shameless to uh, Gotham to even being a Jedi in the latest Star Wars game to uh, yeah. uh, what else did he did? Uh, Amityville Horror movie that came out a few oh, years absolutely. ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. He is such a good actor, man. And he has the look. He has the look. So, mm. yeah, I think he would be a good Harry. Definitely. La- yeah. Last thing. You know who's a phenomenal actor besides he's a phenomenal director and stuff like that that I cannot believe it still blows my mind to this day is, um, damn it, man. His name was on the tip of my tongue. Uh, he directed uh, most of the episodes in Ozark, and he plays in it. Uh, Jason Bateman. Jason hey. Bateman, dude. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to mm-hmm. see him. I want to see him in now, I, one of the Marvel movies, man. I got I one he, for you. Uh oh, here we go. Timothy Oliphant. As Norman. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Timothy Oliphant, man. One of my favorite actors, dude. And one, he's my favorite ghost face. Screen two is okay. my favorite okay. screen. Great job. Okay. Mickey Altieri. Fucking just. I'm going to raise you on that, though. I'm going to raise you on that. I'm going to go another person that we all know. David Caruso. Boom. I love him as an actor in the 90s, but CSI Miami won't be. <laughs> I hate him in CSI <laughs> I hate him in CSI Miami. The whole sunglasses and the one liners. I do. <laughs> That was annoying as fuck, man. Uh, no, I got one for you. If he wasn't in a, if he wasn't, since Marvel is now recasting actors, uh, if he wasn't in the MCU already as a somewhat villain, Walton Goggins was, uh, he played the, uh, he played, what's his name, the Ant-Man 2, uh, the guy, uh, the business guy. Uh, but he was oh, also yeah, 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 Boy yeah, yeah. Crowder and Justified. That's uh, a good one. The Hateful Eight. Yes. Uh, uh, he played in Fat Man. Yes. Huh? yes. Yes. He played in that movie Fat Man with Fat Mel Man with uh, Mel Gibson. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's, you dude, nailed that one. Yep, Walton Goggins is such an amazing. That, actor, that's dude. a good one. That's a, yeah. And then he got the hair, receding hairline. So. Got it. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. That's. That's you know, really, yeah, dude, he would that been, is a really yeah, good, good one, man. Goggins would be, he, he would be, but I'll tell you another one. I'll, I'll raise you another one. I could go on okay. for days. He always <laughs> plays a villain mostly, and I don't know if you guys watch Sons of Anarchy, but uh, Kim Coates, uh, he played Tig Trigger in uh, Sons of Anarchy, but he's, a, yes, he's yes. in a ton of films. He's in a ton of films like Waterworld. Bad boys. Yes, uh, I know exactly who he's. That's, yeah, but Kim right, Coates, number one, yeah, number Kim one. Coates. Kim Coates that's is like the ultimate villain. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, he has a swagger about him too. You know what I mean? That's true. So, yeah. All right, so let's start wrapping this up. So, anything else you want to add, Ian? 
like I said before, I think with this movie, what they're going to do is they're going to make this movie go beyond and be the highest grossing movie of all time. Um, I think what we're doing is we're mostly focusing, and I'm not just saying us, but I'm saying just the audience in general is they're focusing more on the prevalent characters such as Toby and Kirsten Dunst. And we're not thinking of those other characters that were in Spider-Man before that might, you know, you might see Elizabeth Banks in there again, you know what I mean? So I, I think those are those characters that we might see and it might just flip us completely on our edge and they're trying to make this the highest grossing movie of all time and give Spider-Man his own universe. That's dope. I would Marcus, say to add else? to what Ian was saying, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, because of the fact that the Amazing Spider-Man 2 didn't get to do it, like Garfield said, it was a lot of stuff that was left on the cutting room floor. I wouldn't be surprised if they brought Shireen Woodley in as MJ. Yeah. Because of the fact that she's supposed to play Mary Jane in Garfield's right, films, and she yes. actually filmed her scenes. Yes, right. You actually, you actually see her on set mm-hmm. filming her scenes with Sally Field and uh, Garfield. If they, I wouldn't be shocked that they brought her in as MJ in this film either. And uh, Sally Fields is my all-time favorite uh, on May. By oh the way. yeah, yeah. All, Out of the three, yeah, she's my favorite. Um, but like Ian said, I think they will focus more on those characters setting up that Sony universe, like he said. So. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to add my piece. Um, I think that if they do this right, it can be a hell of a thing. I think it could leave more to the multiverse in the future, like we were talking about, whether it's uh, um, a Spider-Verse or whether it's what Madam Web, you know, hopefully we get Ben Riley and all them. Um, especially if it's in the Spidey Zone universe, if Sony does it right and they have the whole Spidey Spidey universe that ties into Venom and you know Tom Hardy and all that other jazz, you know, finally get Venom with the Spidey symbol on him, the whole nine. I think it would yeah. be ill. Yeah, I think it would be super dope. Um, I like I said, I just hope they do it right. That's all. That's all my thing is. Spider Man is my favorite character. That's why I say that. Um, I feel like there's so much potential, like you guys are saying. I I see it, man. So many spinoff stuff can happen. So many incredible things can happen um, from this one movie. Uh, it could definitely be an Avengers type movie that it just branches out to make something even bigger. Uh, especially that Spider-Man is one of the few superheroes that everybody else's villain is his villain everybody else's he he teams up with fantastic four he teams up with x-men he teams up with the avengers he teams up with like the list goes on and on so yeah i'm excited i'm excited to see what this is um the more that leaks and stuff come out the more excited i get the more news that ian sends me the more excited i get and i'm I'm literally listen i am waiting for tomorrow i hope that trailer drops tomorrow like I said, everybody, today is Memorial Day. If it drops tomorrow, that's it. It's the, the internet will blow up. Yep. Yeah. And you guys always know that if the trailer does drop tomorrow, I'm going to react to it, and I'm going to have my boys back on here <laughs> to discuss <laughs> the damn trailer. <laughs> now, what would be nuts, though, if one of our fan castings becomes Norman Osborn? Oh, my God, dude. Listen, if that, that would is be the key, phenomenal. that'd be... You know what, though? Here's the deal, though. Now that you mention that, ooh, because I know we're wrapping up, but remember this, and this this just blew my mind, like, for two seconds. J.K. Simmons in Andrew, uh, not Andrew Garfield, excuse me, Tom Tom Holland's universe is a different J. Jonah Jameson than J.K. Simmons in Toby's uh, Toby's universe. So that means that you could possibly have a J.K. Simmons in a Andrew Garfield universe, which would also mean that possibly that uh, Norman Osborn, right, in this universe could either be the Norman Osborn from Toby's or Andrew's. It could be one of those actors still. Mm -hmm. It could be Willem Dafoe as, like, 
this normal guy or it could be the one from andrew's universe or it could just be someone new that yeah yeah or like i said <laughs> another possibility it could be the opposite it could be the same jk simmons and it could be that mysterio was a scroll and he's still alive mm. boom all the scrolls for Ian. <laughs> Ian. Ian thinks everyone's a scroll now. Like everyone, everybody's a scroll. Everybody's a scroll. Every He's everyone's a Mephisto. She's I'm gonna a make scrolls. that a t-shirt. I'm gonna make that a t-shirt. <laughs> but it's like everyone in WandaVision when we all thought everyone was Mephisto. We're like that fly was Mephisto. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Oh, all right, boys. Man. Well, thank you for being on the show. And That's a problem, everybody, thank you. thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned because you know that we will discuss when the trailer drops and for more geekly uh, discussions coming up soon. I love you. Be safe. Talk to you soon. Peace.